Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you can open up your King James Bibles to Ephesians 6.19. Okay, today we got a testimony from a brother and sister in Christ, but I wanted to read some scripture before we get into the testimony. Ephesians 6.19 Ephesians 6.19 reads, And for me that utterance may be given unto me, this is Paul speaking, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Brothers and sisters of Christ, we're supposed to be a living testimony for Jesus Christ as well as a verbal testimony. Okay? Turn to 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Why well, I started that? Why well, I started there, brothers and Christ, is Remember, we're supposed to be a living example, a living testimony of salvation, not just a verbal. Today, the biggest thing in the world right now is everybody likes to claim the title Jesus, uh, Christian. They like to claim the title Christian for themselves, and it's all verbal. Their deeds, their works, their life doesn't line up with their words. Okay, for us, brothers and Christ, you need to be a living testimony as well as a verbal testimony. Why? Because we keep reading. Verse 18, And all things were of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You're supposed to be a new creature in Christ Jesus, and the life that you live now is supposed to be a living testimony to help re reconcile people to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, as well as your verbal. Okay? That he had given us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Be ye reconciled to God. For he... For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, that's why it goes back to verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The physical life, when God takes a hold of your life, the old man is dead and buried. The new man is raised with Jesus Christ. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. God says the, the do's and the don'ts. He gives you his word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We're set apart from the world. Love not the world, neither things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Prove. All scripture is given by inspiration is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We're supposed to be set apart from the world. Okay? Ephesians 6.15 says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We just did a video recently about, Are you ready? And we went through all the eight commands that a soldier is given. Six are putting on armor pieces. The seventh is prayer. The eighth is you're to watch. And the whole point of watching what's going on in the world is to strengthen the things that remain. Not get distracted by the world. Not to start getting fearful and turning our backs on things that remain. The good things that we had. We're supposed to strengthen the things that remain. But one of those things was Ephesians 6.15 says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Okay. And in Romans 10, 15, we read in, in that study, it's, uh, And how shall they preach, except they be sent? 
As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. That, a man, that the man of God may be perfect, for good, furnished unto all good works. So you're not just a verbal testimony, you're a living testimony. We're supposed to be preaching the gospel when God opens doors. Okay. Who is the door? Jesus is. I am the door. Amen. It come to me. Okay. Jesus is the door, but God will open doors for us to witness, brothers and sisters in Christ. And in these last days, we desperately need to be witnessing for Jesus Christ. A lot of us, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm going to throw myself in there. A lot of us get burnt out. We get burnt out. Okay. Uh, I hand out these books. A Brother in Christ did, How to Be Saved and Know It, okay, the original, I heard he updated it, this, I got the originals, <laughs> you know, but that's a, it's a joke between the brothers in Christ when it comes to the Bible version issue, I have the original, um, but we've got these that you hand, I hand out, I've got gospel tracts that a brother in Christ up in Canada helped me make, okay, and like I said, it has hell on one, on one pot page, and it's got heaven on the other page. So even if they just read a little bit of it and just throw it to the ground, it plants seeds. Hell, heaven. There is a hell and there is a heaven. Which one are you going to? Okay. Um, I found some old uh, gospel tracts. Um, I don't really promote uh, chick publications anymore because a lot of, it's become a business. A lot of the, I mean, the gospel's not that complicated, Brother Says Christ. You don't need 300 different types of ways to preach. They got so desperate to bring out new gospel tracts that they start changing the gospel. They start sugarcoating the gospel. They start watering it down. They start perverting it. Because if you've got the truth, let's say this was absolute truth. I like this one. This one is. The one they did is called the Killer Storm. At one point, they have to steer from the truth because you can't make any more gospel tracts. You made them. They have the truth. At one point, if you want to keep putting out more different types of gospel tracts, you've got to start going against the scriptures. you got to start sugarcoating it. you got to start changing it. you got to start watering it down. And they do. So I don't really... Just so you know, I found some of these old ones that some places, I can't recommend every gospel tract that every place puts out. You're going to have to read through them and compare them to the scriptures and make sure that they're not leaving anything out. Did they leave out repentance? Did they leave out... Uh, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confessing both in prayer, asking God to save you, and the changed life afterwards. That's why I had, I had a brother in Christ that we got together and we did a gospel tract ourselves where it has all of that in it. So I prefer the gospel tracts that most often times you're going to have to make your own gospel tract if you want to be good nowadays because a lot of the places that used to print gospel tracts they're starting to go the way of the world. They're trying to sugarcoat it. They're trying to water it down and easy believism and everything. And they take, they oh yeah, Jesus died for your sins, but they, they downplay sin and the consequences of sin. Not all, but sometimes they do. Sometimes they leave repentance completely out. Right? So sometimes you're going to have to make your own gospel tracts. But brothers and sisters Christ, word, it says here that how beautiful, in Romans 10, 15, it says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. Ephesians 2.12 says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. No hope. I was destined for hell because I had sinned against my Creator. That's what it means by no hope. I had no hope. I was going to go to hell and then get tossed into the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. There's no hope. When you come across the lost world, that's their, des that's their destination. That's where they're heading. I didn't say that they're guaranteed to go there. That's where they're heading. God provide a way out. It's a hope. The blessed hope. I know where I'm going when I die. If I get caught up in death or I get caught up in life at the catching way of the body of Christ, I'm His, Jesus Christ. I know where I'm going. Okay? We have this hope. Now, we live, I told you before, Brother Jesus Christ, with my own testimonies, that as a living testimony, when you're living that hope, people see that, hey, He's not getting scared. Why isn't He falling apart? The world's falling apart. There's a lot of fear going on out there. Wars, rumors of wars. Um, Famine, uh, economy collapsing, and 
You know, sodomy is out of control. Uh, feminism is out of control. Uh, wickedness, fleshliness, it's just the world is so wicked. It's like before the flood. It's like, why isn't that person like, I don't know, freaking out, losing his calm, losing his peace, losing his joy? What, why is he so peaceful and so calm? That's an open door when they ask you that. And you give him the hope that is in you. How we know this, 1 Peter 3.15 says, 1 Peter 3.15 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. It's not a head thing. It's a heart thing. People always say, oh, just memorize scripture and you'll be good. I memorized scripture as a kid. It was, it was Bible perversions. I think it was an NIV at the time. Bible perversions. I memorized a lot of scriptures, but then over the years, they disappeared. I forgot them. Why? Because they're up here. Remember, the Bible always talks about it's down here. It doesn't say hide God's word in your head. It says hide God's word in your heart. Okay? But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. That's how there's a changed life. Salvation is a heart issue. Not a head issue, a heart issue. You can miss heaven by 13 inches. It's up here. You have the knowledge. You've got stuff, verses memorized. Like John 3.16. But it never makes it down here. You never give your life to Christ. The old man is not dead and buried. I love the, a lot of people love the old man. They keep the old man. They're being deceived. And the Bible is a whole other study, but the Bible talks about sending them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That lie is, I'm saved. I'm born, I'm a, born, I'm a Christian. They're believing a lie. And no matter how much we preach to them, it seems like they don't want to listen. But there are those out there who will. We still need to get people saved. We're still waiting for that last soul to get saved so we can go and be caught up. But remember, it's a heart issue. You're trying to reach the heart of man, not the head. Don't get stuck in intellectual discussions with people as far as, you know, with questions after question after question because all they have is questions. You're seeking those people that they want the heart, the heart issue. The heart is ready. They're ready for the gospel down here. When they ask a question, it's to get an answer because they're truly seeking an answer. Up here, you're asking questions just to ask questions. Down here, you're asking questions because you want the truth. You want the answer. You're seeking God. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you. With meekness and fear. Meekness and fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right? Well, Brother says Christ, you ask me, do you still fear God after salvation? Absolutely, I still fear God. Absolutely. Okay. We're supposed to. I fear the chastening of the Lord. I fear letting Him down. Disappointing Him. I fear, we talked about this, going up there and standing before Him and Him going, here's your penny. Just shaking his head at me. Here's your penny. At the judgment seat of Christ, we get up there, our works are burned away, and here's your penny. He just shakes his head. Here's your penny. Move along. I, I so want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful one. Right? That's what I want to hear. Right? Brothers and Christ, that should be all our attitudes of what we want to hear. Right? We need to be out there. We need to be preaching the gospel. Brothers this Christ, whether you leave in gospel tracts places, you hand books. I usually save these for someone that I've given a gospel tract to, because this is cheaper than make than this. I give a gospel tract to, they come and they start asking the right questions, and they're very serious. I'll give this to them. Sometimes I've given this to all my neighbors, period. I just went straight to this for all my neighbors because they're close people that I see every day, and half of them are professing Christians. So I gave them this, how to be saved and know it, to see if they actually followed the true plan of salvation, or did they get caught up in the worldliness of easy believism. Okay. Now, a brother in Christ, sister in Christ, uh, sent me a message, and I wanted to share that message. I asked their permission, they gave me permission to share that message with you as an encouragement to the brothers and sisters of Christ out there. 
Okay, so this Brother and Sister Christ lives in Belgium. Okay. They're doing something that is an encouragement. I don't know if we can quite do it here, but you, as far as in America, but you can still try. It might work, but it's working where they are. The, the doors are still open in certain countries. So in Belgium, it's open. So I'm going to read this. We try to be here as a family to be a support for everyone who wants to know His Word. What we are working on now is that together, I and my wife make a kind of flyer together with a Bible verse on it, and then, for example, put a day and hour where we will also, well, we are also present. In other words, be present. What they're talking about as we get into this is that they, they, there's different parks that they'll show a date and time that will be here, and they start reading the Bible to people. Okay. We then take our Bibles to a piece of grassland in a forest or on a meadow and put ourselves there and automatically curious people come and sit down and start listening to what we read from the Bible. It's something that simple. You don't have to be like, i got to know how to preach and be a good speaker or anything. They're just sitting there reading the Bible out loud. And there's people that come and sit down and start listening. And these in this way, in these ways, and all the other things that God gives us, we try to plant seeds and give the Word of God to the people. Almost every time we do this, when the weather outside is not too bad, people come to listen and some who afterwards also ask questions about the Bible and our Lord. You get people interested. We ourselves think it is good that we can do this work for our Lord so that the people here in Belgium can also get to know the Gospel and that they can ultimately live for Jesus Christ. Now this weekend, they give nice and warm weather, like the weather report says it's supposed to be nice and warm. So we have planned a day at the, at the water where it is quiet and quiet and where many animals such as dwarf goats, bambies, and sheep roam freely in the meadow where we are also among. So far around 50 people have already agreed to come and listen and make it a pleasant afternoon. Through this, we hope we can introduce a little more people to the gospel. You say, well, how, why are they doing it this way? There's an important reason. Why are they doing it this way? The, this are one things we fill our free time with. This is one of the things we fill our free time with. Giving people a chance to hear the gospel outside a church building. Here in Belgium, at least 80% are Catholic. So brothers and sisters of Christ out there need to be praying for this brother and sister in Christ that God will keep using them clear up to the, to the end. But the reason they decide, hey, God put it on their hearts, we're going to do this this way. We're going to hand out flyers with, gospel, with verses, gospel verses, and we're going to put a date and time where we're going to be coming to these places and we're just going to be reading the Bible out loud. Remember, the Catholics, this King James Bible, they hate it. They're against it. A lot of those people over there haven't heard the Word of God from the King James Bible. They've only heard it from Bible perversions. Okay, so this brother says, Christ, just understand, why are they doing it this way? Because most people over there are professing Christians, predominantly Catholicism. Same thing here in America. So in this way, we want to introduce them to the one and true Word of our Lord, Jesus Christ. They can speak to him anywhere, and that they do not have to sit in a building with four walls. Remember what the Bible says, there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We, brothers and sisters of Christ, can pray to God the Father through the Son, capital S, Son, Jesus Christ. Catholics are taught they can't do that. They've got to go through the priest and the, the, the organized religious system there. So this brother says Christ is trying to teach them that they can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They just have to get truly saved, the true plan of salvation. Okay. And then they can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't have to go to a Bible building like the Catholicism teaches. You have to do everything in the church. You've got to get married in the church. You've got to have your, as a baby, you've got to be... Um, 
My brain freezes sometimes. You gotta have water sprinkled on you as a little baby, baptized as a baby, an infant, and then you gotta get rebaptized when you get older, and you've gotta do, you gotta say penitence, you gotta do confession. It's all about that building and making you depend on those guys, and those guys, you have to go through them. No, you don't. You can go through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come to the cross broken. And true repentance, having godly sorrow for your wicked state, the state of your flesh, your, your personal sins, your own wickedness, have sorrow for it, the state that you're in. And that because of that wickedness and sorrow, you're on your way to hell. Give your life to Jesus Christ at the cross. Okay. You don't have to go to these organized religions and these Babel buildings to get saved and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We still have so many ideas, this back to the letter, we, we have so many ideas that we hope to work out in, in the service of our Lord. We feel it is our duty that together as family and as the servants of our Lord, we should reach out to the people here in our country as much as possible and try to guide them to a life with our Lord Jesus Christ and away from, and away from organized religion. And the best way, I think they're doing a really smart way, they're just reading the Word of God. And when people get curious, they come to them asking the questions. But like I said, be careful. There's some people that ask questions just to ask questions. They're causing problems. They're here to cause divisions. They're here to try to get you to doubt your own salvation and, and the promise, precious promises that God has given us. But then you have people that are seeking truth. The questions are coming from down here. They're seeking absolute truth. They want the truth. But how do you get people, how do you tear down the walls? How do you get them to drop their shield? How do you get them to, to tear down the walls, their defense shield, as they say, their defense mechanism? You just read truth and let them come to you and ask questions. To help them see that church, churches are pagan buildings where a different kind of gospel is preached. If you were to just go to them and say, those buildings are pagan and, and that's a false gospel, their defense shield might come up and they're like, I don't like listen to him, that's a raving lunatic. But just handing out gospel tracts with gospel verses here and there. And then what they're doing, just showing up at the park in the area over there. And they're sitting somewhere and they're just reading the scriptures. This is what the Word of God says. And someone will go, wait a second, I didn't hear that before. I've never heard that before. What? Can you expound a little bit more on that? They start asking questions. They get interested. Their defense shield is down. That the Bibles they read and in have ad ad adapted to corrupt texts of people who have nothing to do with faith, but want to destroy it. They're talking about the Bible perversions. They're trying to show them the King James Bible is God's perfect written word. Look at what God did to us through the gospel found in the King James Bible. Look at our life. Now we did a teaching and in, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. You're not out there to just yell, 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 and you know, we're out there in meekness instructing those, in sincerity and in truth, with authority. God has given us authority. Remember what Paul said, and we read the verse about, may I speak boldly. You can speak boldly without, you know, being a jerk, being prideful, being arrogant, without making them feel like, e -e -e. now, once you start preaching on truth and sincerity, truth and sin, that sin should convict them and then their pride should be chipped away slowly. But the best way for them to put their pride to the sides, I like this idea. They just read the Bible and when they have questions, they'll answer questions. They go to sit down, I'll listen, and their pride gets put to the side. The defense shield gets put to the side. They are they're temporarily, and I hope it's permanent, they're leading people to Christ, but it's like they're temporarily open. It's an open door. They're temporarily opening to truth and letting truth come in. Now, they can still reject the truth, but they're letting it come in. You're planting seeds, okay? Paul said, I have planted Apollos of water, but God gives the increase. Our job is just to plant the seeds. But they're trying to get away from the battle building system, the Catholicism over there, and all the Bible perversions that are over there, that uh, tear Jesus Christ down, that tear down with the truth, okay? They tear Jesus down and make him out not to be God. They tear down the gospel and make it out to where you have to either, it's faith and works, 
oh, you can need to have faith, but it has to be works. And the, 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 the organized religion is going to tell you the works you have to do to keep your salvation and everything. These Bible perversions are really bad. Okay. I've said it before, all the Bible versions, when I've said it before, someone corrected me. It's not that they take the word repentance out completely in all the Bible versions. They take it out as it applies to salvation for today. Not that they're talking about repentance in the, in the Old Testament. They're not talking about repentance as it applies to salvation in uh, the time of Jacob's trouble or the day of the Lord. I'm talking about for today. They take repentance out as it applies to salvation for today. The death of Jesus Christ, the catching away of the body of Christ. Right? They're very dangerous. They promote an antichrist. I was watching a video where it, the title of it was is for the Jewish people, because I like to check in to see how Israel's doing, the third temple, and how things are going on over there every once in a while. And there's videos, they're saying our Messiah is coming. The third temple is about to be rebuilt and our Messiah is coming. No, the anti, the, uh, we call it the, the ultimate antichrist, the man of sin. He is an antichrist, but he's going to be the antichrist. The antichrist of antichrist. The man of sin, the son of perdition, pretending to be the Messiah. He's a fake Messiah. He's a fake Christ. He's coming, and that's who they're looking for. That's who the Catholic Church is looking for. we got to point them to the real Jesus Christ. The Messiah already came. And the Jewish people rejected him. Okay. When, uh, the next person that's coming is, is Jesus Christ is coming to call us home. That hope. Remember to be able to preach that hope to him. Jesus is going to call us home. And then there's going to be seven years of the time of Jacob's trouble. Where God's going to be pouring his wrath out on this world. And you're going to have a fake and a fraud try to come during that time period. And pretend he's Jesus Christ. You don't want to go through that time period. But that opens doors when you're just reading the Bible, and the Bible talks about that blessed hope. What is that blessed hope? I've never heard of that blessed hope. Can you expound a little more? And then you show them other verses and chapters. Yeah. Trying to get them away from these Bible perversions and these Bible buildings is a good thing. We hope, me and my wife, that we can continue to do this for a long time, and that our Lord may continue to support us. We pray for this every day. And it's in my prayer now that I got this message. Brother Jesus Christ, please pray for this, Brother Jesus Christ, and all brethren out there that God puts things on their heart, that they're doing things for the Lord that will lead people to absolute truth. Jesus Christ and His Word. Okay. Whether, like I said, whether it's gospel tracts, um, whether it's online ministries. I'd love to do a house church, which will be that we'll talk about a little more in this next study that we're going to be doing. I really wish the brethren would push hardcore on house churches and everything. And then street witnessing, when you have two of you, when two of you go out there before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You go out by two or more to street witness. You can lay gospel tracts out by yourself. You can hand gospel tracts out by yourself. When God opens doors, walk right through them. But when it comes to actually having a ministry that's based off of street witnessing, you need two or more. Okay. Someone comes around, well, he did this and he did that. There's two or three of you to say, uh, we didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? You need some witnesses. You need some backup. That's why Paul, a little side note, Paul would always call for backup. Did you notice how he reads, please send so-and-so here. I need you. Send so-and-so here. I had to leave so-and-so over here because he was needed there. And he was needed over here. I'm sorry about the scratching. But please pray for this, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm praying for all the brethren when it comes to being a living witness and a verbal witness. Victoria! Maybe that'll get her to stop. It's my miniature schnauzer. Forgive me, brothers and sisters Christ. Also, as we pray, back to the letter, also as we pray daily for all our brothers and sisters of the world, that they too might find the necessary strength and ideas... To make this world better in the only way to salvation. This is the only way to make this world better. But the world as a whole isn't going to get better. But what they're talking about is, is leading people to Christ. Okay. The way to our Lord Jesus Christ. This was it. This was it again for now. We hope you can have another nice day together in the presence of our Lord. We pray daily for you and all the brothers and sisters that they too may have life may live fully for our Lord 
See you next time, brother, the brother and sister in Christ. Give me just a second. That was a great encouragement from a brother and sister in Christ, and it was a great idea, too. So why did I read this as a testimony to encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that you can do the same thing, that you can get out there, you can lay gospel tracts around. Okay. You can have banners. Some people put signs out in front of their yard. You can have banners. You can put signs up. Even this banner would cause, cause people to ask questions. Peter Ruckman did this banner. If any man be in Christ, old things are passed away, all things, all things have become new. Well, what does that mean? Someone comes by and sees that banner. What does that mean? Start reading the, the Bible to them. Brothers and sisters of Christ, 1 Corinthians, you don't have to turn here, but 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Brothers and sisters of Christ, if somebody so much as picks this up and looks at the front and sees hell, time is I'll read this. Time is running out. Are you ready? For the wages of sin is death. Hell. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. If that's all they read, it plants a seed. My labor is not in vain. You open it up, they see the next big picture, and it says heaven. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So if they read, for the wages of sin is death, then flip it open. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It says heaven. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. If that's all they read, it plants a seed. Some people are starting to get burnt out because they see people throw them away. They see people, you know, for the most part, and yeah, they do get thrown away. I, I put out so many of these, and I'm telling you, probably in these last days, 95% of them, 90 to 95% of them probably get thrown away without even being read. That's why I tried to put a picture on the front so they'll at least see the picture and they, they at least read the word hell. It plants a seed. But it's not about those 90%. I'm putting this out for that 1%. I'm putting this out there for that one person, period, that picks this up and reads it. Know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Right? I look online and how popular wickedness and everything is online, and, and sometimes I get discouraged and brethren cheer me up when they uh, remember to give God all the glory, but there's times that they'll come back and say, I thank God for this study, you've taught me something new. Thank you, brother. It, it lets me know that I, I know my labor is not in vain to begin with, but it's good encouragement to really point to this. The brother says, Christ, we need to be encouraging one another. Okay? We need to be encouraging like I'm trying to do here with this video. Encouraging you, brother says, Christ, let you know that your labor is not in vain. You're not alone. It's not easy. It's, it's, we get discouraged, okay, putting this stuff out there. Sometimes we put videos out there, and it seems like uh, our people, is it really helping the brethren? Are they really taking the, what, the words that God has shown me and putting it in their heart and living it? My whole goal lately, I mean, I had my ministry goals with words, have meeting, uh, about prayer, about giving God thanks for all things and, and uh, giving Him glory in all things. And it still is that, but a lot of it is engineered to more than anything. It's just in these last days, keeping your eyes on that blessed hope with the life that you're living. Don't let this world discourage you. We have work to do. Don't let this world discourage you. We're supposed to watch, but strengthen the things that remain. We see how wicked it is out there. That means we need to get out there and keep preaching the gospel. We need to be standing for this book and the life that we live. Okay, we need to be holding the brethren accountable to this book. To God's perfect written word, not just this book, but God's perfect written word in English. Okay, remember John 4, uh, 12, 46 reads, John 12, 46. Let's turn to this one, John 12, 46. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Should not abide in darkness. In Matthew 5, 14, Five fourteen, we read, "Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid." Remember, we talked about when Jesus talks about the candle. You don't put the candle under a bushel and hide the light. You put it on the nightstand 
where it lights up the whole room. The light is everywhere. That's how we're supposed to be. Okay. John 12, 46, we read, I am coming as a light into the world. Jesus is the light. And Jesus said, I will be in you. And he talks about the comforter coming in you. The Holy Spirit's connected to Jesus there once. So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have Jesus in you. And he's a light to the world. You're supposed to be a light of the world. The city of Sound Hill cannot be hid. Philippians 2.15 says, Philippians 2.15 That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. Remember, now are we the sons of God? It's talking about saved sinners. Without rebuke in the midst of, the, of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Holding forth the word of God, hiding it in your heart. You have the Holy Spirit in your heart. The Word of God is shining through you with the life that you're living. Not just your words, but the life that you're living. And Jesus Christ is shining through you. Not just in your words, but the life that you're living. You're supposed to be a light into the world. This perverse world. And brother, says Christ, there's fewer and fewer lights out there. I, I understand. We're getting to the last days. And there's two reasons why there's fewer lights out there. Remember that darkness is that light is coming to the world. You know how I told you about people love to memorize John three sixteen, but they never keep reading where it talks about he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth is condemned already. Because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Neither cometh they to the light, lest their deeds be reproved. Now, one reason in these last days why the, there's very few lights out there is because the world as a whole loves darkness. God has given them strong delusion. They've rejected Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, who is God, the Father, manifest in the flesh. He's God fully and completely. They reject Jesus Christ. They reject repentance. They will not give the life at the cross. They will not give the old man at the cross. They love their life down here. They love their wickedness. They love the darkness. They don't want to give it up. And they've been deceived by false religions that they can live forever. If they do, if they do this or if they do that, they do this. And what has God made uh, when it comes to the wisdom of this world? He's made foolish the wisdom of this world. These are all fools on their way to hell. That's one of the reasons why there's not that many lights out there. A second reason why there's not many lights out there, the Bible talks about there's a falling away. Okay, there's a lot of brethren that are getting distracted by the world. They're getting distracted by the flesh. They're getting tempted by people around them. Right? And we'll get into this in another study about being surrounded by lots of people but still lonely. Why am I still lonely when I'm surrounded by all these people? That's going to be our next study we're going to get into real quick after this one. But the point is, is that's another reason why there's not many lights left. And there's, and with that being said, that's why there's so few lights left. People that are actually standing clear to the end, not turning their back on the end of the return of Jesus Christ that goes hand in hand with the true belief in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. They're going to stand firm to the true plan of salvation, not give in and start preaching a false gospel because that's what the world wants. I want, to be, I want to be part of something, you know, and you're getting too lonely and everything. You want to be part of something. You start compromising this so you can get along with the world. The world. The world's falling apart. We're supposed to be over here, and when you come over here, you're going to find out there's very few lights over here. When I'm talking about lights, it's people that are letting Jesus shine through them. Okay. Over here, when you didn't have the light, there was tons of you. Tons of you. It just seemed like there were so many of us. And Man, I'm not lonely. You come over here and you realize there's very few lights in these last days. But we have to keep being a light to the world. Don't give up. Don't start fainting now. Don't start faltering now. Don't fall flat on your face. We're supposed to stand, stand, stand. 
Remember 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Steadfast. Stand, stand, stand. Okay. Make sure you're shining in the light of the world. You know the number one thing that prevents people from seeing the light that we're trying to shine to them? 2 Corinthians 4, 4. This brother and sister in Christ is trying to be a light to this world. And they're praying that they'll do it as long as they can before they get stopped. And who's going to stop them? 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, remember we're supposed to be a light to the world. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light, the light of the glorious gospel should shine, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. We're trying to be a light into the world, and who comes along and tries to hide that light? tries to blind the lost world, but ultimately, don't get me wrong, ultimately, everyone has a choice to get saved and, and go to heaven. When you stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne to be judged, there is no excuse you can give. You, God had so many open doors for you. He put so many barricades in the way to prevent you from going to hell, which is where Satan's going. Right here, it says the lowercase g God of this world. It's talking about Satan. He's on his way to hell too, and that's where, in the lake of fire... He's going to be in the lake of fire, and that's where he's going to spend all eternity. There are so many roadblocks to prevent you from going there. Okay? So many roadblocks. Brothers and sisters in Christ, keep up the good work. Don't give in. Don't give up. Keep preaching the gospel. Don't get burnt out. Okay? I think a lot of reasons we see a lot of burnt out Christians is we're so spread out. We're not... We're, I understand God wants us spread out sometimes as the body of Christ to preach the gospel to the world. I understand that. But the Bible talks about how we're supposed to be coming together and striving together. And if we're purposely isolating ourselves, it's so easy to get burnt out when you're a ministry of one. When you're all by yourself. You know, it's not supposed to be that way. There was times, like I said, I don't want to get into the next study because I got it on my heart and on my head already because I got the notes and everything, but... There are times where you are going to be alone because that's just the way it is in these last days. But our heartfelt desire should always be to be face-to-face -face fellowship, house churches, coming together, striving together, and working together to encourage one another so we don't get burnt out. We don't get burnt out. That's why the Bible says you're to confess your faults one to another. When's the last time you confessed a fault to a brother or sister in Christ? Okay. Just... Don't want to get too out there, but uh, too off track. I mean, this isn't out there stuff. This is the absolute truth, but I don't want to get too off track. The light of the world. We're supposed to preach the gospel. This brother and sister in Christ had a great testimony of what they're trying to do for the Lord. And I'm going to be praying for it. That the, God keeps the doors open for as long as possible. And if the doors close, it's because a lot of the people don't want the truth anymore. If there's people that want truth, God will keep the door open. The moment there's people that don't want truth... God will let the door close. Why? Because the Lord case G God is blind the minds of them that believe not. Okay? God will send him strong delusion. So right now, this brother says Christ are, are trying to do something for the Lord. And I'm praying for them that, that the door stay open. That they plant as many seeds as possible before the do doors close. Okay? That's my prayer. Now, I got a message afterwards that did an update when they talked about in the letter that I just read how they were planning to do it, saying this. Here's the update. Hi, brother. Just a quick update on where we sat together today in the afternoon to read, read the Bible. And I'll show some pictures up here. There were still around 20 people present, and five people already want to delve more into the Word of God. Mm -hmm. We were happy about this, and we had a good day. More seeds planted for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have a nice day, brother. See you next time. The brother and sister in Christ. Okay. 
Get busy living, being a living testimony, a light unto the world, brothers and sisters of Christ. Get some work done. God will open doors, and if He closes a door, He'll open another. He might not want you to do this, but He might open this over here. Okay? You might be doing this for a while because it's working, and I pray this for this, brothers and sisters of Christ, that the doors stay open, but God might close the door on this and say, well, now you're going to have to do something else. He'll open a door over here. When God closes doors, He opens doors. Amen. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord and let Him give you courage to preach the gospel. Remember, along with a verbal testimony, I put this, get busy being a living testimony, a light unto the world, along with a verbal testimony of, of the saving grace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ found in the perfect written word of God. Remember, don't just be a verbal testimony, be a living testimony. All right. I say this again because I love when Peter Ruckman was talking some guy, he wanted to preach the gospel to some guy, and he has a testimony on it. And he goes, I want to tell you something about, about my Lord and Savior. And the guy stops him right there in his, in his tracks and says, do you go to the theater? Back then it's like saying going to the dance club, partying at the bars and everything. No. Do you cuss? No. Do you smoke and drink? No. Okay, then go. In other words... Are you just like me? Then how can you help me if you're just like me? Okay, now don't get me wrong. I'm still a sinner. There's, uh, we're all sinners. I'm a safe sinner. But we're supposed to be separate from the world. We're not supposed to be hypocrites. The whole point of his testimony that Peter Ruckman gave on that was hypocrisy. Why would I want to hear the gospel from you when you're doing the same things I'm doing and living like I'm living? Why would I want to hear from you? Okay. Make sure that you're a living testimony along with the verbal testimony. You're supposed to be both. Okay. We still fail the Lord. We still fall, uh, in the last study, we still fall flat on our face when we did the study about, are you ready? And we're going through the checklist. There's times where we fall flat on our face and God will pick us back up. Brethren, will, will God, through, God through brethren can encourage us to pick us back up. Okay. Trust the Lord. Do things His way. God knows what He's doing. Okay? With what's going on out there in the world. Trust the Lord and get busy living for the Lord and doing the work of the Lord. So hopefully this has been an encouragement, especially from the brother and sister in Christ, to get back out there. Continue to preach the gospel, whether it's verbal or whether it's in gospel tracts, whether it's the life that you're living, you're being a light unto the world. Get busy out there living for the Lord and looking for that blessed hope with the life that you're living. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.